A6 graders, our growth mindset, math maniac, Panthers. Yeah, let's go. During our lesson today, we didn't get through it all, so I'm asking you to watch this video. I'm going to try to make it quick. If you like somebody to slow it down, because I'm going to go pretty fast, this is going to be on YouTube. So uh, it's safe, YouTube. YouTube safe. Um, but you can go to the lower right-hand side, I believe, and you can click on make it slower, and you can slow it down. And I might sound like in this and move like this, but you'll, it'll be at the speed that works for you, the pace that works for you. So our bell ringer, what is half of a half of a half? All right, we're going to come to that later. Why isn't my progressing here? Big thing, uh, IXL, we have stars. Get six stars, get six points. If you've already gotten your stars, you are good to go. Look like this. Uh, you may be missing some stars. Some of you may just be going and going and going. If your levels are like at, say, 700 and 800 and so on, like that, that's okay if you don't get a star. You're still going to get points. That means your levels are so high, it's taking you a while to get your points, okay? So don't worry about that. You're good. Our goal today, our target, multiply multi-digit decimals. Now, we've done dividing fractions, which is easy as pie, flip the second and multiply. So really multiplying fractions is, you know, dividing fractions is still multiplying. If you've done multiplying fractions, now we're gonna make the transition between multiplying fractions and multiplying decimals. So we're gonna start here. This is gonna be a one, this whole box here, this white box represents one. All right. I mean, I know you're used to it being 100, but right now I need you to shift your way of thinking and look at this as just one. But if you break that one into 10 equal pieces, how much is each one of these pieces worth? Well, that's a tenth. One out of 10 equal. So let's slide one of those right over here because that's a tenth. We're talking about a tenth now. All right. And I want you to notice something. The denominator of tenth is a 10. Look at the size of this piece. All right, now if we break this piece into 10 equal pieces, so we're taking a tenth of a tenth. Now on our bell ringer, we took a half of a half of a half. Now we're just taking a tenth of a tenth. Well, what is a tenth of a tenth? And we did the algorithm, one tenth times, whenever you hear the word of, that means times. One tenth of one tenth equals one, because one times one is one. 10 times 10 is 100. That's right, and I want you to notice, look at that denominator. It's getting larger. As the denominator gets larger, our pieces get smaller. The size of this piece. If you get a si if you had a pizza that started off this big, and you get one hundredth of it, you're getting one little tiny piece here. If you get one tenth of it, you're getting this this piece here. So it's just one tenth. What would you rather have? One tenth with a smaller denominator, less. And, or would you have one one hundredth with a greater denominator? But look how small that piece is. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the piece. So let's review. This represents one. That's one one. What if I had two of these? Well, that would be two ones, right? Okay. This is one tenth. This is one one hundredth. So again, small, bigger denominator, smaller piece. Smaller denominator, bigger piece. Okay, what's the value of each in tenths? Take a moment, stop, pause the video, and then we'll come right back and see how you did. Okay, how did you do? Did you get three tenths for A? Yeah, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths. Sorry about my sloppiness there. That's three, how do you, would you write that? Three tenths, how would that be as a decimal? 0 0.3, why? Because this is three, we read the three, and whatever place it is in, that's the word we say. Since this is in the tenth, tenth place, we say three tenths. What about this one? One tenth, this one, one, two, three, four, five tenths. What's the value of each of these in its lowest simplified terms? Pause the video and then come right back after you get it, see how you did. All right, let's see. So this is 5 tenths, but we want to know in lowest terms. You can probably tell just by looking at it that this is half. Yeah, half. 
that's 1 half. So 5 tenths is the same thing as 1 half. That's the lowest terms. What about this one? Same thing. It's just horizontal. This is horizontal. This is a ver oops, vertical, straight up and down, straight up and down, vertical. So again, half. What about this one? You can kind of see that this is 5 tenths, right? If you count the long pieces horizontally. But if you count each little box, if you count them, you, there's 10. In this row, there's 10. That's 10, 20, 30, 40. That's 50. 50 one hundredths is also equal to half. What is the value of each in hundredths? Let's see this pen here. Hmm. Well, remember the little piece is a hundredth. So that's one hundredth plus another hundredth equals two hundredths. So this is two hundredths. B is twenty hundredths. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, and the, 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 the twenty. See, there's two here, there's 10 here. 10 times 2 is 20. Or you can say 10 plus 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. What about this one? This is 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 hundredths again. Or you can multiply. You can just say 10 times 5 because there's 5 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 groups of 10 is 50. What is the value of each in tenths? 10 tenths, 20 tenths. No, not tenths, that's not 10 tenths. That's only one tenth. Oh, Mr. Hoffman, I was testing you guys. It's just to see if you were paying attention. Good job, good job, you got it. So this is two tenths, yeah, right? One, a two, two tenths, which is decimal. What does a decimal two tenths look like? Is it A, 0 0.02, or is it B, 0 0.2? Ah, which two is in the tenths place? Well, this is in the hundredths place, so it's not this one. Ah, this two is in the tenths place. There we go, two tenths. What do we got here? Five tenths, that's it, five tenths, which is also equal to, as you can see, one half. What is the value of each? Your turn now. Pause the video, tell me the value of each in the place value that it's asking for. All right, how'd you do? Hundreds. Hundreds of the little guys. How many hundreds are here? A uh, hundred hundreds. How many tenths are here? Tenths are the long ones. You can go horizontally if you want. I'm going to go horizontally because I've already started that way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten tenths. Huh. Hundred over hundred. Ten over ten. Hm. Ones. Ah, this is just one one. One big. This whole thing is one, so it's just one one. One, one. What is one, one? Well, one, one is one. One divided by one is one. What's 10 tenths? Well, 10 divided by 10 is one. What's 100 or hundreds? Uh, 100 divided by 100 is well, one. Yes, at this point, if you uh, want to redo your quizzes, get a higher score, check for the link in OMHS under quizzes module. And then when you're ready, come back to this video. All right, welcome back. I hope you did good on your quizzes. Remember, you can take it as many as times as you like, and I will take your highest score. We might have to find a way to uh, submit that so that I know you did it again and that I know when to go in and change your grade, that, a way that's not too crazy. We'll, we'll figure that out later. In the meantime, what is half of a half? This goes back to our bell ringer. Our bell ringer asks, what is half of a half of a half? Well, let's do what is half of a half first and then take half of that, whatever that is. So. Remember, you ever hear the word of? Multiply. What does of mean? Multiply. What, what, what two-letter word? See, it's like a wheel of fortune. <laughs> what two-letter word means to multiply? You'd like to buy a vowel? Yes, there's one O. Of, correct. Way to go. All right. It's like hangman, you know, wheel of fortune. I'm a wheel of fortune guy, if you remember from the beginning of the year. Okay. So how do we multiply fractions? We already know how to do this. Yeah, just take the numerator, multiply the numerator across. And my PowerPoint's going slow. And it's doing acting up a little bit. Maybe I can edit this part out. And maybe I'll keep it just for fun. You see the wheel turning? 
Oh, you can't see it when it's, oh, okay, we just went ahead too many slides. Let's try to get this back on track. Maybe the mouse clicker will work better. My um, remote control, let's see if that helps. Oh, that does seem to work better than the keyboard. How about them apples? You like them apples? So one fourth, okay, what were you saying? Not numerator, numerator, one times one is one. Denominator, denominator, two times two is four. I'm already at 10 minutes, I'm taking way too long, let's go. Candy bar, take half, not take, that's half the candy bar, take half of that, what do you got? Well, how many pieces would you have? Equal pieces, equal, remember equal, keyword equal, when you're talking about fractions and decimals sometimes, so uh, yeah, actually decimals do. So what do we got there? A fourth, so what's half of a half? That's a fourth, but what if we take half of that? Take it to the next level. Take half of this. Now, I know it's, you have to use your imagination that this is a straight line. Um, well, now we don't, if we need to have equal pieces, these all have to be equal. So now I, I got to kind of divide every one of these pieces in half again. So take half of that one, take half. My goodness, Hoffman, why can't you draw straight? Take half of this one, half of this one. Now, how many equal pieces do we have total? Well, let me get a different color. We have one, two, Three, you can't see that, can you? Let's get it. Another color, what color would be good for all of these different things that are going here besides red? A dark green? Let's try the dark green. All right, here we go. Oh, that's better. Let's make it thicker too. Pop up, make it pop. Oh yeah, now I'm talking. Yeah, one. I was talking. I'm still talking, I'm just not writing like I want to. Here we go, one. Oh, I lied again. I have to edit all this stuff out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our total number of pieces is our denominator. And how many pieces are we talking about? Just this one right here, one eighth. So half of a half of a half equals one times one times one, one. Two times two times two, eight. One eighth. Notice as our denominator gets bigger, our piece gets Smaller. That's provided that our numerator stays the same. Right. If numerator changes, well, that cha that's a game changer. That's another story. But if our numerator is the same as the denominator gets bigger, our piece gets smaller. Okay. Let's, what is? How does this apply to our model that we had learned? Well, we know that this thing here with all these little squares in it, this equals one. This is just one. So each little square is a hundredth, and each one of these here is one tenth. So let's shade in half. Let's shade in half going horizontally. So this was half vertically, <coughs> pardon me, half horizontally. Now let's put it together. Now the overlapping part, all this stuff here, it's supposed to be green. Oh, now it's green for sure. Uh, how much is that of the whole thing? Well, fraction wise, we can do this. We can say, oh, that's equal parts. How many equal parts do we have here? We have four equal parts. So the, just that one part out of the four is one fourth. And acting up again, PowerPoint. Oh, maybe it's because I'm pressing on here. Uh, maybe that's it. Nope. And there's our one fourth. How many hundredths is one fourth? So if we look in this box, remember a hundredth is just one of these little tiny boxes, like here. How many of those do we have? Well, there's one, two, oops, two, three, four, five. There's five in that column. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's five more. Oh, there's five in each column. Hmm. Fifteen. Twenty. 
25. Huh, oh, I just thought of this. There's 5 on this side and 5 on this side. If you do that, you can do 5 times 5 is 25. 25 what, though? We said 25 out of 100. How would you write that as a decimal? Would you write that as 0 0.25? 2.5 or 0 0.025. 25 hundredths. Ah, so how do we do this? We read the number after the decimal, like we're reading any number, and then we say whatever place value it's in. So this one is 25, that's the number, and what place value is it? Is the last digit in? That's what I forgot about that last digit part, very important. What place value is the last digit in? It's in the hundredths place. So guess what? Here's our answer, 25 hundredths. How would you read this one? This is two and five, it's in the tenths place. Two and five tenths. How about this one? This is 25, but it's not 25 hundredths, it's 25, this is in the thousandths place. So this would be 25 thousandths. Okay, what about decimal form? Five tenths. Let's shade in five tenths. Remember one ten oops. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths vertically. All right, but if we shade in five tenths horizontally, there's our overlapping area. What do we have in there? How many little boxes? Five on this side, five on this side, that's gonna be twenty-five again. But where does the decimal go? Well, 25 what? 25 hundredths. So when we write our decimal, it should be like this. 25 and the 5 needs to be in the hundredths place. How about this one? See the pattern? 3 tenths here, 5 tenths here. How many hundredths? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ooh, 5 on this side. 1, 2, 3, 3 on this side. You know, I'm just noticing that five and there's a three. I wonder if that's a coincidence. I'm not sure. We'll have to pay attention to that. Okay, so 15. 15 what? These little guys are each a hundredth. How do you write it as a decimal? 0 0.15. 15 and the five last digits in the hundredths place. Oh, that's thick. All right, are we starting to see a pattern? Oh, yeah. Five times five is 25. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, but how do we know where to put the decimal? What's going on let's See over on this side? Over here, that lets us know the decimal is going to go here. What's going on over here on this side that lets us know the decimal is going to go here? Oops. And there we go, here. Make a prediction. Well, I think we've established that we can just do 3 times 4. 3 times 4, if my calculations are correct, is 12. But the big question is, where does the decimal go? Does it go here, here, or here? We'll say A, B, or C. Let's find out. Let's use our model to help us. We're going to shade in three tenths, because remember, this three is in the tenths place here, and this four is also in the tenths place. Shade in four tenths. What's the overlap? Ah, we can do four times three. No, it's 12, but 12 what? What is each one of these things called? Hundredths. So how do we write 12 hundredths? 0 0.12. 12, read the number and the last digit, whatever place it's in, it's in the tenths. No, it's in the hundredths place. There we go. That's 12 hundredths. So how do you, so we're starting to see the pattern now. Again, how do we know where to put the decimal? Let's look at another one. Can you predict what this one's going to be? Hmm, I know I could say 2 times 3 is 6. Where is that decimal going to go? Is it going to go in front of the 6? Like this? I'll put a 0 there. Is it going to go a 0 there? I think it's going to be one of these two, because I doubt very highly it's going to be 6. Well, I know. Yeah, it's not going to be 6. Okay, it's got to be one of these two. So we'll call this A. We'll call this B. Which one do you think it is? Make a prediction, and then we'll find out. Have you got your prediction yet? 
Ready or not, let's see. Oh. Two tenths, shade and two tenths. Three tenths, shade and three tenths. What's in here? Huh, six. We knew it was going to be six, but six what? Six out of a hundred. Again, what does that look like in decimal form? Well, if we do it like this, and we read this number, that's six, but six what? Which place value is it in? Here, this might confuse you. Let's erase that for a second. This is in the tenths place. So we would read this six tenths. That's not it. We want six hundredths, right? Six hundredths is what we want. So let's see, what if we write it the other way? What if we put 0 0.06? Now let's read it. It's still six, but six what? Now this is in the hundredths place. So this is the answer. Is that what you picked? I thought so. I knew you did. Now we got the pattern. Can we make the rule? Hmm. Well, let's play quizzes and we'll come back and find out more. By the way, this quizzes, multiply decimal models, is going to be in your OMHS under quizzes module. Take it as many times as you like, I'll take the highest score. Get them, go get them, go get them, Panther. You notice I didn't say go get them tiger because we're panthers? Yeah, okay. All right, welcome back. I hope you did good on your quizzes. You Got to get those, those brain cells just bursting out of your forehead like my veins sometimes do when I get excited about teaching math. All right. Starting to see a pattern. Make a prediction. Ooh, now we're kicking it up a notch. Big time. What's this? What, what? You put in a whole number in there, mixed, like a mixed, kind of like a mixed number, really, isn't it? I mean, we say mixed numbers is like one and two tenths, right? That's a mixed number because you got the integer and you got, uh, you know, this fraction here. But could this be called the whole, uh, I'm sorry, Ooh, one and two. This is still one and two tenths. One and it's in the two, read the two, and it's in the tenths place. So it's one and two tenths. Okay. Let's see. How, oh, see, guess here's the thing. How are we going to shade in one and two tenths? I know how to do two tenths. Two tenths is like this. There's one tenth. Here's two tenths. How do we do one and two tenths? Oh, you know what? What's, what's one again? This whole thing is one. So I could just like draw one over here and, sh and then like, you know, shade it all in like that. But we're going to do this instead. We're going to add another board for us. And we're going to shade in the one. That's one. And then we're going to shade in two tenths of the next board. Now, what do we got left? We got this four tenths. We're going to take the horizontal four tenths, but we're going to go all the way across. Now we can find out our overlapping and add up all these things here. Let's kind of be smart about this, though, right? So we have one, two, three, four. But how much are in each row? Ten. So there's ten hundredths. 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40. So right here is 40 hundredths. And I'm going to rewrite this because it's kind of hard to see in that yellow. 40 hundredths plus whatever we have here. We have 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 hundredths. 48 hundredths. That should be our answer. 48 hundredths. How do you write that as a decimal? 0 0.48, 48, and which place is this last digit in? It's in the hundredth place. Do we have a rule yet? Oh, let's see, here it is. 1.2 times 0.4, if you're gonna write it vertically. This is a vertical setup, this is a horizontal setup. So here's all our vertical setups. This might make it easier to make a rule. Can you see the rule? Where to put the decimal? We know 5 times 3 is 15. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6. And 12, it's really 12 times 4, is 48. Does that make sense? 12 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4. Yeah, but how do we know where to put the decimal? What can we do with these problems? Hmm. Let's take a look. It looks like no matter what, we go one, two. There's the decimal. One, two, one, two, 
one, two, one, two. Does that work every time? Well, let's try another problem and try to find out. Uh, let me move my picture here so you can see this problem underneath. Wow, I revealeth to you the grandest omega oh, problem. Make a prediction. One and 20 hundredths times four tenths. What are, what are we going to get here? You got your prediction? Ready or not? Let's go. Here we go. One and 20 hundredths. Here's our one. Now, how do we do 20 hundredths? There's our 20 hundredths, right? See? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hundredths, and then ten, and the total of 20. Yeah, 10 20 hundredths. Okay, let's take our four tenths all the way across. What's our overlap? Overlap? Oh, it's still 48 hundredths. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, because here's 40 hundredths. Here's 8 hundredths. That's 48 hundredths. So, yeah, 1, 2 still works, right? Okay. But here's the thing. 120 times 4 is not 48. So now we have something to think about. 120 times 4 is, if I, come on, Microsoft PowerPoint, is 480. So would that still work if we did it this way? 1, 2. No, because that would have us put the decimal here. And that's 4 and 80 hundredths, or 4 and 8 tenths, if you, because you can take off the 0. But either way, it's not the same thing as this. So that rule isn't going to work in this case. So what we're going to have to do is this time we have to move the decimal three times here. But what makes the difference? If we look at, oops, back up for a second. If we look at this, hmm, if we go back, rewind, rewind, blah, 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 back in time. You didn't know I had a time machine, did you? Yeah, me either. So again, we said this is uh, 480 because 120 times 4 is 480. All right, so but let's look. Here we moved it twice. Twice, 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 twice. Here we moved it three times. What's different? Ah, if you haven't already figured it out, this is one digit two digit, three digit. There are a total of three digits after the decimal. Three digit total. He, this two is a digit, that zero is a digit, this four is a digit. So three. So this time we move it three times. One, two, three. This one has two digits. One, two, one, two. They all have two, right? Okay. Back into the future. Get it? Back to the future. That's a great movie series in the 80s. Uh, you guys are too young for that, but I'm wondering if any of you have talked. So what about this? How did this happen? How is this 48 hundredths? Is that equal to 480 thousandths? You've probably never seen thousandths before, but I provided it here for you, for your dancing and dining math pleasure, for your, grain, your brain to grow. I was going to say your grain to bro. Your grain to bro. Yo, bro, your grain. You're going to grow your brain. You're not going to bro your grain. Okay. Or I want to bore you to death. Now that's another story. So 48, see? 48 hundreds. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10. Here's another 10. Here's another 10 hundreds. Another 10 hundreds. And then 8. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 8 hundreds. What about over here? Oh, my picture's in the way. I shall reveal again to you great knowledge. Thousands. See? Here is how many thousands? 10, 20, 30, 40. There is a hundred thousandths here. One hundred thousandths. Another hundred thousandths. Another hundred thousandths. I have my pen. Come on, pen. There you go. Another hundred thousandths. And then how many are here? Eighty. Yeah, you can count them if you want. You can, you can trust me. There's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, which is really a hundred minus the 20 down here is 80. So, you can see it's equivalent. Ten thousandths is the same thing as, I'm sorry, a hundred thousandths is the same thing as ten hundredths. A hundred thousandths is the same thing as ten hundredths. Or you could say ten hundredths is the same thing as a hundred thousandths. Right? Okay.
All right, so where does it go? Where's the decimal gonna go in problem number one? Pause the video, come right back. How many digits are behind the decimal total? One, two. So we're gonna count. One, two. There it is, B is the answer. All right, number two. All right, how many digits are behind the decimal? And then all of the factors that are involved, both factors, one, two, three, four. So I told one class to do bunny hops. Let's hop. Instead of hopping underground, I don't know what hops underground, let's hop above ground. So we're gonna go, we'll start here on the right and go right to left. We're gonna go, how many? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There it is. All right. Pause the video, come right back. Okay, we're back. What do we got? One digit, two digit behind that decimal. How many are behind this decimal? One, so that's a total of one, two, three. Hop three times. Start here, bunny. Come on, bunny. One, two, three. Good bunny. There's our answer. All right, number one on this screen. Here we go. How many are behind the decimal? How many digits? We got one, two, three. That's and how many behind this decimal? Three. I'm just going to keep counting from there. One, two, three, four, five. So I got to hop five times. Come on, bunny, hop. A one, two, good bunny. Three, four, five. Ah, this time the decimal goes way out here. Yeah, you know, guys, know one times one is one. Just where do you put the decimal? Now you know. How about this one? Ooh, this is like, like more complicated, right? Yeah, you're going to have to know how to do these. If you don't know how to multiply, you're going to have to uh, f let me know somehow so we can get you up on that, okay? But at least you're going to know how to where to put the decimal when you do get this multiplication down. And that's important right now. That's our main target. All right. One, two, three, four. So behind the decimal, this one, we got two. Behind the decimal, these two. That's a total of four hops. Four hops. Okay, bunny. Ready to hop? Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm the bunny. I'm ready to hop. One, two, three, four. This is where the decimal goes. And it's time. Sorry this took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take, but I hope it was worth it. Please go kill these quizzes. I can't wait to see you guys on Friday. Get this stuff done. Get her done. Bye.